Welcome back, Guavesa, and today I figured we'd take a little bit of a look into my first game I ever played with the new uh, Retaliation Cadre detachment. There was a really big debate between Montca or Retaliation Cadre because those are the most interesting to me, and seeing as I don't have any crute in my possession, actual crute, other than my Imperial Guard proxies, I figured this would be a fun way to dip my toes into the new edition. And I videoed this or well, I took pictures for this during Easter, and I was going to have a way bigger game against my cousin who I traditionally play against, who has the painting channel, but my little cousin really wanted a game with me, and I hadn't played 40k with him in a long time, and he's just like a, like first, second, third grade, he, or like second grade, he's really, he's really young, really sweet kid, and uh, I've never beaten him, not once, and uh, you might look at these lists and think it's a little lopsided. Was it intentional? Was it not? Like the points that I was using, I was looking at from the Leaked Codex, I was kind of a little sketched out as to why certain things cost so much, and it was probably the reason why I failed a little bit, and maybe my plan that I had didn't pan out exactly how I wanted it to, but it is what it is, so uh, I guess we'll dive right on into it. So firstly, we have his list. Now, disregard the turret that you see. Uh, that just got cut completely in order to make it somewhat even for uh, what I had to bring to the table. He has this little orange dreadnought on the end. Uh, he paints his guys up ultramarines, but I don't know why he has orange red. I think it was a gift from one of his neighbors. He's got his uh, heavy intercessor squad led by a apothecary. Now, we're just pretending that the apothecary can be in it. We bend the rules for him. He's real sweet. Uh, and, you know, like he just wanted to play a game. And that's what he had. And it was one of the few painted guys that he really liked of his. So after that, we've got the impulsor and the... Heavy Intercessors, we're going to pile onto the Impulsor, and, after, and finally, we've got the Tech Priest, and in front of him are the Outrider Squad. So, very simple, really small game. After that, there's my list, and uh, I'm using some of the new things that I got from uh, the friend of mine who gave me quite the great deal. That's where I got the broadside from, and where I got the Cold Star Commander. First time I've ever used Cold Star in my life. Not like it would really matter when you, shoot, when you all will soon see how small the battlefield is. He's leading a Crisis Suit team with Burst Cannons and Flamers. He, too, has Burst Cannons and Flamers, uh, but the high up Burst Cannon. And I got a squad of Breachers, and those guys are pretty much going to be the ones that are going to pull the majority of the weight for this battle. So after that, we uh, lined up, and as you can see, his deployment was very simple. The Impulsor holding uh, the Intercessors and the Apothecary with the Outriders in the center, the Dreadnought with the Tech Marine on the far end, and then I... Pretty much matched them up, but I had my broadside as far away from the Impulsor as possible, uh, lining up against the Dreadnought, and uh, on my Breachers in the center, and then on my other flank, all my Crisis suits very far away from the Dreadnought, so that they don't get munched up too easy in combat. So then we, uh, here's a starting off view, you know, it's the Christmas carrots in the center, and if you notice in the very center of the battlefield, that is the quarter that we were running for, and uh, it was just king of the hill. At the end of five turns, whoever controls the quarter wins. So, uh, it's going to be a time. Uh, if any of you have a guess who's going to win, please let me know right now. I, I can tell you, uh, I, I was not feeling too confident, as seeing as I never beat him anyways. But we'll see how it goes. So first turn comes up, and he gets the roll off. He wins it. And so he moves his impulsor up and his outriders onto it, but onto the quarter. But uh, none of his things are within range to charge. So they all move up and unload all of their bolters into my breachers because they don't really have that many good anti-tank weapons to shoot at me. Or their melta weapons just aren't in range. And it results in uh, me losing two breachers. So that was a pretty quick run for them. And I decide this is the perfect time for me to run up with my boys and start blasting. So I charge up the center with my breachers. I have my broadside sit still because everything's in range and it's just fine. And I don't want it to get in range of the dreadnought, which would tear it to shreds. Along with my crisis suits and the cold star flying up fast in order to get in range of everything with all of their guns. The game plan is we're going to have the broadside pop the dreadnought so that the crisis suits are safe from any melee and the breachers and crisis suits are going to torch all of the outriders to death and upon the conclusion of this we find uh all of the outriders dead my crisis suits have charged into the impulsor to tie it up and hopefully try to keep the uh heavy intercessors in there needless to say i couldn't wrap around quite like i wanted to and it didn't work and the dreadnoughts is down to a measly four wounds, but the tech priest is going to heal it up in the next round. So everything's looking pretty good for me so far. But then his turn spins around, and uh, he unloads his heavy intercessors, so they don't have room to keep them all in, and he charges his tech 
Marine and his Dreadnought into my Crisis Suits, felling two of them, and another one of my Breachers die. I'm telling you, the Guardian Drone worked wonders for me here. Really good stuff. And the extra armor penetration uh, that I had on the Flamer Suits, I was kind of sad that uh, two of them went down, because that was going to be exactly what I was going to use to get rid of all of the heavy intercessors. So then my turn spins around and I'm planning on just destroying the tech marine and destroying the uh, dreadnought. I was going to pump all of the shots into the tech marine from my two suits that are in combat. Thankfully it does kill him because he's infantry. I get the extra armor penetration making an AP2. So he saves on fours. Tons of shots with flamers and the uh, burst cannon shreds him. And then the broadside unloads into the Dreadnought as, well, no, the broadside unloads into the Impulsor and does diddly squat, which is just a pain. I started to hate broadside at this moment in the game. And my Breachers lower the Dreadnought down to two wounds. And then everything starts going downhill for me because he starts punching away at my Cold Star, rendering down to three wounds. I had a four shield gen on him. And then my breachers get completely decimated, not by shooting, but by melee from all of the aggressors and the apothecary. And I just couldn't kill anything. So this is where the whole he always wins comes into effect. I torch the dreadnought to death, thank God, with my commander. And my broadside fails to do anything to the impulsor once more. And my breachers do a couple wounds to the inter heavy intercessors in the center. But alas, it was not enough, for they were cleaned up, my broadside shrugged all damage, and my Cold Star Commander was rendered down to one wound. And in a last-ditch effort, I figured I would charge into the Heavy Intercessors, guns blazing, and with a uh, railgun in hand, and hopefully try to bully them off the center objective, and I'd be in combat with them, so I'd still be able to shoot because I'm a vehicle. But alas, uh, that didn't work, and I just tied myself up. They couldn't do anything to me. I proceeded not to do anything with that to them, and my Cold Star and Impulsor were just stuck poking each other for the duration of the game. Uh, and that's where we called it, because he just had it soundly with the aggressors in the center, the, not the aggressors, the uh, heavy intercessors in the center, and I just couldn't do anything to stop him. Real sad, but you know, it is what it is, plus it was Easter, and uh, he really wanted the game, and he always wins, so uh, why mess up that trend? Hopefully, I will be able to get a video for you guys out in the future with what the intended battle was for. I was going to do a pure crisis suit list against my cous other cousin, and he's got quite the Blood Angels list to boot. And I'll put a picture right here for you now. Hey, isn't that cool? Look at that. All beautifully painted. Way better than mine. So in the future, within the next couple of weeks, once I finally get out of college, go back into the normal world and can see my cousins, we're going to run a bunch of games and we'll get a lot more battle reports out for you. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. I'd like to thank my patrons for sponsoring this episode. Tim Steffens, The New Vivek, Sam Jur, Ryan Hall, David Palilio, K Mag, Jonathan Patino, Chris F. Mark, Magnus Throdi, and created by Philip. Thank you all very much for keeping the lights on out here. I really appreciate it, and I hope all of your days go for the greater good.